Have you ever noticed how you act on a first date? Perhaps you laugh a little louder at the jokes. Maybe you sit up a little straighter. You are, in essence, performing a slightly idealized version of yourself, all because you know you are being watched. This isn't just vanity. It's a fundamental principle that ripples from quantum physics to the very heart of social interaction. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. We call it the observer effect. The act of measuring or observing something inevitably changes it. You can't check a tire's pressure without letting a little air out. You can't see an electron without knocking it off its course. So, what happens when the observer isn't a potential partner or a physicist, but a 10-foot-tall, gleaming metal humanoid you've just welcomed into your home? How can we possibly build a true robot partner when its very presence turns our lives into a performance? Consider the dream sold to us by technologists. We imagine a seamless assistant, a robot that anticipates our needs, fetches a drink before we feel thirsty, and helps with chores without ever being asked. To achieve this marvel, the robot must learn from us. It must watch, record, and analyze our every move building a predictive model of our daily lives. But which version of our lives is it actually learning? Is it learning the messy, chaotic, authentic human experience? Or is it learning the slightly more organized, I am in my best behavior for the robot version? If you know your new robotic helper is learning how to load the dishwasher by observing you, do you load it with your usual haphazard flair? Or do you suddenly adopt a hyper-efficient, geometrically perfect stacking method you've never used before? The robot, in its earnest attempt to learn, has just been fed corrupted data. It has learned a procedure that doesn't reflect reality, all because it was watching. This is where the observer effect tangles deeply with computer science and artificial intelligence, particularly in a field called imitation learning. Imitation learning is exactly what it sounds like. A robot learns to perform a task by watching a human do it. It's a shortcut, far more efficient than the trial and error of reinforcement learning, which is like teaching a dog tricks with an infinite supply of treats and patience. Yet, how can a robot truly imitate us if we are, consciously or not, altering our actions for its benefit? It's like trying to learn a dance from a partner who is constantly trying to guess your next step instead of moving naturally. Let me add some more context to it because the observer effect is a principle that the act of observing or measuring something will inevitably change the very thing you are trying to observe. You cannot passively measure something without interacting with it in some way. A simple everyday example is checking the air pressure in a tire to measure the pressure, you must connect a gauge which allows a small amount of air to escape. Therefore, the act of measuring has slightly lowered the tire's pressure, changing the state you set out to measure. This effect is most famous and significant in the world of quantum mechanics. To see a subatomic particle like an electron, scientists must bounce a photon, a particle of light, off it, of that electron. This interaction unavoidably knocks the electron, changing its position and momentum, meaning the very act of finding out where it is changing, where it is, uh, and how the change is taking place. Now, let us see this website. Uh, and here you can see that 100% of observations interact with and alter their subject. That means 100% of observations interact with something that alter their subject. And where a robot observes our performance and try to learn something, it actually learns a false reality. That means the data it gets is corrupted data. And the data a robot actually learns, these uh, green things, that means the performance data observed, 
it is 75 percent and this one the light yellow that means automatic behavior data uh, which is missed uh, is actually 25 percent that means for a robot to be a helpful partner it must learn our authentic habits however its constant presence means it disproportionately learns from our best behavior a polished unnatural performance it learns how we act when we know we are being watched not who we truly are it's it 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 has a greater significance because the flawed imitation loop it calls that means human performs tasks which is altered for the robot robot diligently observes the performance robot learns a flawed inefficient procedure and robot executes the task incorrectly reinforcing the cycle that is this feedback loop this loop shows how imitation learning a common ai technique can fall the robot does not learn our true goal it just couples our altered actions leading to a stilted and inefficient partnership so the quest for true intent which is the true intent that means researchers are developing algorithms to overcome this performance bias the goal is to move beyond simply copying actions naive which we call naive imitation to understanding the human's underlying goal that means intent based learning which is far more robust in real world situation and you can see this chart where loading the dishwasher that means here naive imitation success rate is this one 45 percent and intent based learning success rate is 85 percent which is much much more so the same thing happens when we uh, think like making morning coffee or tidying a child's room etc the entire choreography becomes a stilted awkward feedback loop Researchers at places like Carnegie Mellon and MIT are wrestling with this very ghost in the machine. They design sophisticated algorithms to try and filter out this performance bias, attempting to deduce the human's underlying intent rather than just copying their observed actions. They might, for instance, program the robot to understand that why you demonstrated a perfect knife cut, your real goal is just to slice the vegetable. regardless of the imperfect slightly crooked way you usually do it when no one is watching but can an algorithm ever truly know a secret unobserved intentions we see the latest videos from boston dynamics where the atlas robot performs feats of breathtaking agility and we are rightly amazed yet these are heavily controlled demonstrations The robot is executing a program in a predictable environment. The real challenge isn't making a robot that can do a backflip in a lab. It's making a robot that can figure out how to help you clean up after your kid's chaotic birthday party. How does it learn what is truly helpful when its very presence makes you act like a more capable, less in need of help person? The robot partner, therefore, is trapped in a paradox. to be a good partner it must understand you to understand you it must observe you but by observing you it changes you into someone else so as we stand on the cusp of welcoming these technological marvels into the fabric of our daily lives we must ask a crucial question are we building partners who will adapt to our world or are we just building expensive mobile mirrors that will only ever reflect the polished curated version of ourselves we choose to show them